joining us, guys. And uh, hats off to some of you on different parts of the world who have joined on time because well done. <laughs> well done. But welcome to everyone. Um, for anybody that hasn't met me before or been on the workshops or seen me, my name is Zena, and it's lovely to see so many lovely faces here, familiar and new. So welcome. I am your host today for this wonderful workshop by Pam um, on how LinkedIn really works. Um, just a quick introduction on me. I specialize in helping mums in business. So I'm a mompreneur mentor and coach, qualified NLP master practitioner, and I use that in helping moms evolve, grow and evolve their businesses with firm foundation. So that's in a nutshell what I do. Um, I am hosting these workshops online and we're always looking for amazing speakers. So if you have an area of expertise, then please do shout out, reach out to me directly. I'll pop my details on how you can get in contact with me in the chat box. Um, mm -hmm. So do look out for that. This workshop is being held through Korshelia UK, which a lot of you all know. Um, for those of you who don't know much about Korshelia UK, it's a registered not-for-profit community organisation which works to empower and uplift women. And it's growing organically in leaps and bounds under the dynamic leadership of its founder and CEO, Miss Ritu Sharma, who's dedicated her life to bringing women of this world to find their own power and their true worth. Unfortunately, Ritu's not able to join us today as an urgent matter has come up. However, Carol has joined us, who you may know from Men Are From Mars and the women empowerment events that are put on through Australia UK, um, which she kindly hosts. And I'll just pass the mic over to Carol for a quick introduction as well. But over to you, Carol. I was liking Carol's wave. <laughs> yes hi everyone and yes there are some familiar faces um yes yeah, so as a volunteer i host the mixed event which is termed men are from mars which is held on the first thursday of every month derek has been a speaker um on that event previously uh pam case has been a speaker and also ruth stugden stugden rather and for the women empowerment event which is held on the third Thursday of every month, the next one being next Thursday, 7 to 9 p.m. UK time. They are global events. So if you're free, always check Eventbrite, Ritu Sharma Women Empowerment event. So that's the quick intro from me. And I'm looking forward to this, Zina. Um, yes, I will. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I want to take this opportunity to welcome our amazing speaker, who a lot of you know already, Pam Kate. Um, a little bit about Pam. She has earned the reputation of being one of the finest LinkedIn coaches in the UK. Um, she teaches people how to find their target market, impress them and turn them into paying clients. Over 140 recommendations on her own profile and five star reviewings. Um, page a testament to how enjoyable and effective for coaching is i have got my notepad and pen at the ready if you haven't got one ready yet i would suggest you go and get one because there'll be lots of notes to take down lots of learning to, to be had um so definitely grab yourself a pen and paper um and before i hand over to pam i will request that all questions are left till the end of the session unless pam obviously asks for interaction directly um just make a note of them or if it's something that's super urgent please drop it in the chat and i'll try and pick up on it at a suitable time whilst pam, pam is going through um her very valuable information that i can't wait to absorb today so um yeah drop your questions down ask at the end every question is important to us and we'd love to get through as many as come our way so over to you pam to kick us off for the evening Okay, everybody get your pens ready. Here we go. Okay, now, LinkedIn is ranked the number one social media platform for business-to-business -business sales. But the mistake that people make when they are business-to-consumer is to think, okay, LinkedIn's business-to-consumer, uh, sorry, um, Facebook's business-to-consumer and LinkedIn is more sort of business-to-business. Well, actually, no. Where are the people with the disposable income to buy your products? When people are in business, they are still consumers. 
So all of your target market is on there and there are ways to find them, okay? Now, there are about 750 million people on LinkedIn and sort of every minute another two people join or something like that. Now, the way you have to think of LinkedIn is as a networking room. Now, if you know anything at all about networking, networking is about getting known and trusted and liked and building relationships with people so that they eventually either buy from you or refer you to other people. Okay, it's also your marketing and advertising platform. And if you know anything about marketing and advertising, that is about the, um, you know, constantly showing up, constantly being in front of mind to people and showing up in your best light. So it's those two things. Okay, now, when it comes to LinkedIn, the things you can do with it that you can't do with Facebook, for example, is you can sit and think, and this is what I encourage you all to do, okay? Write down who, who is your target client or is it that you're trying to get a job? Because believe me, your target client then are your ideal employers. So it doesn't make any difference. Write down who are they? What kind of industry do they work in? What kind of job title are they likely to have? What geographical location are they likely to be in? And what would they be talking about that would indicate that they were your ideal client? So, for example, if I was doing uh, organizing baby showers, I'd say, you hear anybody say, I just got pregnant. That's a good referral for me. Okay, so you need to know how to teach other people what to look out for and what to listen for when you're networking. That indicates a good referral for you. So you need to know this on LinkedIn to go and find those people. And you can find them and you can find them directly, which you can't do on Facebook. And everyone knows they're there for business and everyone knows they're there to network. And LinkedIn's got some really clever filters for you. OK. Now, this is really, 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 really important. Imagine you go into this big networking room. There are 750 million people in it. And someone has said to you, it's free. Get in there you would think, great, but then the organiser says to you, you can have a stand. And you would say, that's, that's even better. And you would make your stand look so amazing and so good that people would be attracted to it and they would look at the, the products and the leaflets and everything else on your stand and they would want to buy. You would do that. And everything's going really well until the organiser says, but well, your stand is not in the main room where everybody else is. It's down that very long corridor down there where nobody goes. LinkedIn's a bit like that, you know. So your stand is your um, profile, okay? Your profile. The thing is that you can optimise it all you like but you must optimize it to sell. When people land on there, it has to sell to them, okay? But the problem is that people don't use LinkedIn unless they're very, 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 very unusual. They don't use LinkedIn when they're looking for something to buy, a product or service to buy. Oh, no, no, no. They go to Google or their friends or their family or their network. OK. So how do you get them to come and land on your profile? Well, if this is your stand at a big networking event, you wouldn't just stay down that corridor. You'd get out into the main room. You'd be looking at the delegates list. 
You'd be thinking, who on here is my target market? You'd be trying to find out where they were and you would be talking to them and you will be giving them a sample of who you are. Remember, you have to get liked. You can't go in all grumpy. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be smiling and you have to be approachable. And you will be giving them samples. So... If it's a product, if it's a service, you might be giving them leaflets or you might be giving them some free advice to show that you're an expert in your field. Or if you've got a delicatessen, you might be giving them some cake. OK, but you would be doing that. And then you would be saying there's more. And my son is down the corridor and they'd be thinking, oh, I really need to come and see it. It's how LinkedIn works. You have to get out into this big room on LinkedIn where all these 750 million networkers are. Find the ones who are your target clients, start talking to them, give them some samples, and then they come to your stand, they come to your profile, and then your profile sells to them. It's all, I hope all this is making sense so far. Okay? Yes. Yeah. There is a way of also, which I teach at the end of my courses, which is quite nuanced. Um, how do you, once you've built the relationship with those people, if they're, you can get incoming, in the end, people start to say, I've been reading your posts. I've been looking at your profile. I'm really impressed. Can you send me a quote for what you do? It happens. It really does. But there's also a way of warming up a lead to the point where you can then ask them for the meeting and you get the Zoom or you get the coffee and then you get the sale that way. So there's lots of different ways um, to do it. However, we've got to show up. So the first thing you've got to do is get your profile nice um, and attractive and selling off the page. This is like going to a networking event. You don't go with holes in your jeans and stuff, do you? And unwashed and unkempt. You get yourself, you know, kind of all nicely suited and booted. So we have to do that with your profile because that profile is you as well as your stand in this virtual room. We have to get it right. So where I'm going to start is I'm going to go very, very quickly over some of the things that your profile needs to contain. Then if we have time at the end, I might be able to go into a little bit more depth about that. But um, I want to make sure that you know how to use the filters to find your target market and exactly how to get what you write on LinkedIn. Your, that is you talking to people in your posts how do you get your posts in front of your ideal target clients? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to go to my profile and we'll zip through that as, as quickly as we can so we can get onto all the meaty stuff. But like I said, if we, if we have time, we'll go back to the profile and you can always ask me questions at the end. Okay. So let me share my screen. Oh, LinkedIn was open earlier. Of course, it's going a little bit slowly tonight because that's the way things go, isn't it? So I'm going to look at my profile. Okay. Can you see my face moving here? Okay, so here are some things. Get your pens ready. Number one, that banner at the top is your free advertising space. Please use it. Remember this one thing around 60% of people only access LinkedIn via a mobile phone. And on a mobile phone, everything's a lot smaller. 
So make sure if you're going to write something on there, the font is big enough to be read on a mobile phone and it's over towards the right because on a mobile phone, it's all squashed up and your photograph is much bigger and will start to obscure some of the stuff on your banner. Your photograph is incredibly important. It should be head and shoulders because that's the distance that we see you from when we are in a face-to-face -face networking event. Um, cropping it here is a little bit in your face and unprofessional. It's all very psychological stuff. But having you in far away or with a team of people, so we don't know which one is you or something like that, not professional, and it, we can't see you. And look friendly. Look straight into the camera so that when people land on your profile, you are looking at the person. You are engaged with them psychologically. And make sure that you're smiling at them. So you're approachable and you're friendly, you're attentive, you're professional, and you are just the right distance away, and that you're dressed appropriately according to what you do. So here I've got a hoodie on because that's who I am. It's, it's fine, I'm gonna teach you how to go onto LinkedIn, but if I was a lawyer, you'd want to see me in a suit. And if I was a builder, you really wouldn't want to see me in a suit because that would, people don't trust builders in suits. Anyway, so we need to, to be, now the reason mine moved, you can only do that through a mobile phone. I don't know if anybody's aware, but research has shown that what we actually say is only 7% of the communication that is picked up. 7%. The rest of it is what psychologists call our nonverbals. So how do we behave? The tone and timbre of our voice, the way we tilt our head, the way we smile, all sorts of little things that people pick up on. So you can animate this in order to make people feel that you are real, you are approachable. You've got three seconds to intrigue them enough to click on that and watch the rest of your video, okay? And uh, so, so you can actually, if you don't want to appear on video yourself, make a little PowerPoint or something like that, that's fine. Also, you will see next to my name that there is a speaker. That is where you can not just, it's to help people pronounce your name. But you know what? It's a little bit more time. So you can say something like, hi, this is Pam Case. And if you've got any questions at all about LinkedIn, don't hesitate to pick the phone up. Um, a free chat is, is always welcome. And then that welcomingness in your voice, people can hear that. You have to make sure that people feel they can approach you. Underneath your name, um, the first um, about 40 characters are incredibly important because wherever you go on LinkedIn, your photograph, your name, and the first few characters underneath your name become your paw print. They are your... Um, stamp. I'm sorry if you can hear my son's parrot in the background. It's very hard to keep quiet. Anyway, so um, so that's all. And you will be when you send a connection request to someone, when you comment on their post, that's the first thing they will see. Think of it as a pickup line, not a strap line. So what would intrigue them? Go for something that shows exactly what you are going to solve for people. Because you know what? The fact of the matter is nobody cares about whether you, what your job title is, what the name of your company is at this stage. All they care about is what's in it for them. You can, as you can see, put a lot more. And this kind of thing here is the kind of thing that, again, makes you really approachable. Because I'll tell you now, again, psychologically, people are drawn to doing business with people who let the free child ego state out to play a little, um, who can be a little bit of fun, who can show that they're a little bit interesting. 
okay? Um, try to make sure that you get your reviews page sorted out. You can actually share each of these five-star reviews as a post. You can share the entire page with people. So if somebody is talking to you and they're teetering on the edge of whether to work with you or not, you can literally send this page to them and say you might be interested to have a look at this. Okay. Feature some of your very best work in the featured section. This is it's a good idea if you've got a lead magnet on your website or something to put that here. If there's something educational, that is really good. Because when you educate people, people are drawn to give, doing business with people who give something away, give things away. And it also positions you as an expert in your field. In your about section, this is... This is really, really important. For goodness sake, read what you've written. And every time you see that you've used the word me or I or we, think about if you can change it to the word you. Because when somebody lands on this and starts to read it, they want to feel you're talking to them. Even when people say my clients or our clients, I, if I read that, I feel like you're talking about an elite bunch of people over here not me. So I'd like to see the word you because then I feel psychologically engaged with it. Make sure that you're not rambling on about yourself and your history and then putting the benefits of working with you last. The best thing people want to see always, whether you're doing a sales presentation or anything at all, what's in it for me? What are you going to solve for me? So demonstrate that you understand what the problem is that you're going to solve and that you can. So that when they actually open this up, you can give them three or five because people remember things in, uh, they're, they're drawn to bullet points and they remember them in threes and fives. What are the top three or five benefits of working with you? Um, a couple of lines from your most one of your most powerful testimonials is good. Um, but never, ever, ever leave any piece of marketing that you have ever done anywhere without a call to action and a variety of ways in which people can get in touch with you. But never make a potential client jump through hoops, go searching for a way to get in touch with you. Um, research has shown that now we only have three seconds of patience as human beings. If we land on any website and it doesn't load, the page doesn't load within three seconds, or we don't get what we want within three seconds, we move on. So don't do that to potential clients. And some people like email, some people like to phone you, some people like Calendly, give them a good variety if you can. Okay, make sure that you have a company page, but please do not work through your company page. It does not work. You must always work through your own profile. There are reasons for this, but to have a company page is good because a company page um, is very well indexed by search engines um, and it helps you to be found. And also you can then pull your logo through to here and here in your experience section. Um, make sure you get your recommendations. You can go to, uh, please don't, Ask anybody that you haven't worked for or with or under or, you know, somebody who really knows you in a work capacity. Um, but go to their profile and hit more and choose ask for a recommendation and LinkedIn will fire off a form that will allow them to fill that in and to send you. A, it's a testimonial by another name. 
once you've got it on your LinkedIn profile, you can then um, use these things on your websites or any marketing collateral that you have. Do not look at mine and think, I have to have that many. You don't. Most people maybe have about five, and I do not ask for them. I promise you they just come in because I just feel that it would be a bit greedy. And I can't quite find the word for it, but ooh, I wouldn't want to keep asking when I've, there's that many on there. Okay. Do you have any honours and awards? There are sections for all sorts of things, patents, publications, courses, um, all sorts of things that you've done, um, certificates, um, and also charitable work you've done and volunteering. People are drawn to doing business with people who show that they have done charitable or volunteering work. Okay. Um, what languages do you speak? Because that will all very often, you know, that will help people who may not uh, have, oh, my goodness, look, you know, I, I, I don't really have fantastic English, but this woman, it's going to be okay because she speaks Hindi and Urdu. Um, or, or it may be that it sparks a conversation because somebody thinks, oh, look, this person speaks the same languages as me. It just, it, it just makes you very human. So there's all sorts of different um, profile sections that you can add. Um, from up here, add profile section. Very often you will see that people have a follow button instead of a connect button. That is usually because A, they have reached the limit of 30,000 connections or B, they have chosen to have um, creator mode activated. If you choose creator mode, you will be able to do LinkedIn Lives pop up or even schedule a live sort of a chat show. You um, can also then write your newsletters, regular newsletters. However, if you're not going to use those things, um, it's better to just have a connect button because some people don't understand this follow and they think, oh, that person's really up themselves. They're saying I can follow them, but they're not interested in networking with me. So, and you do want to grow your network because as you'll see in a minute, there's a damn good reason. The more connections you have, no matter where in the world they are, the better it is for you, okay? So we can maybe come back and go into that a little bit more depth later. Um, it depends if we have time or if you have any questions. But what now I want to show you is it's time to find your target market. So, I always use accountant because it's easy. But if somebody really wants to shout out a particular um, target market, I can see how many of them there are on LinkedIn. Mums in business. Mums in business. Okay. And come back to that one. Give me a job title first. No? Dentist. Could. There won't be dentists on here very much, but there might be. Health and <laughs> wellness. Coach. Yeah, I get, mm, okay. Okay. Thank you. Let's go for, uh, because if there's health in it, it will pick that up as well. Okay. So once you have put in your job title and notice that I've I have bracketed both of these words into um, speech marks because I don't want LinkedIn to give me every other kind of coach that there is. I'm specifically looking for wellness coach. Then we have this brand new white bar that turns up and we can start to... Uh, look into this a little bit further because LinkedIn will now show me a handful of people, a handful of posts, a handful of groups. We don't want that. So we're looking for people. 
So this is now telling me, I don't know if you can see this here, that there are around 91,000 people on LinkedIn who call themselves a wellness coach. So I'm going to go to the next filter. And first are people who you are already connected to. Second are the people that your connections are connected to. Third, is it getting obvious? But watch out, there's a little sneaky plus sign here. That just means third plus everyone else. And you're only going to get the 91,000 or so that you got before. So I would concentrate on going for second. So now I know that there are around 21, sorry, 2,100 wellness coaches who are only one degree of separation away from me, which is brilliant. Um, now, remember, this is my account and I accept all connection requests. What if I wasn't? What if I was being picky and saying, I'm only going to connect with people I know? because there are people like that on LinkedIn. Or I'm only going to connect with my target market. There are people like that too, okay? They're not going to get, you're not going to get the same results in these searches because everyone you connect to gives you closer access to their target market, okay? I don't know about you, but you're only allowed to send 100 connection requests a week and um, I couldn't cope with trying to get to 2,100 in one go so maybe I want them in the country where I live let's cut it down now there are 813 and again that is still a little bit too many for me to deal with right now so I would then possibly go piecemeal now I really 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 hope that you can't hear this too strongly in my accent but my nearest city is Liverpool so I might start there This is manageable. So there are 10 people in my own city, one degree away from me, who are now my, who are my target market if I'm looking for wellness coaches. And once I've dealt with those, I might go on to Manchester, London, all the other cities in the UK, and then further afield and keep a record of which ones I've done. So now, can you see wellness coach? That will be in their profile somewhere. Then I can have a look at them and I can see if they're active. If they're not active, might not waste a connection request on them. Because if you, if you get a big bank of connection requests who are, that are not accepted, it kind of tells LinkedIn that you might be spamming and they take a dim view of that. So be careful. They need to be active. If they've got over 500 connections, they're probably also not going to be fussy about who they connect with. But um, otherwise, you're going to have to box clever. And again, there are that again is very, very nuanced and it's very particular to your business. What do you do? I would certainly be commenting on some of their posts before you end up sending a connection request. And there are other reasons for that as well. You can also search for people by their current company. And under all filters, you will find that you can uh, narrow them down to industry or school. Okay, so that's how to, to find them. However, what did Zena say to me before? She said, what would they be called? I hope I'm spelling this right. Okay. 175 people are calling themselves a mumpreneur. 
that are one degree away from me in the UK. Does that help, Zena? However, they might not use that word, but they might talk about being a mum in their posts. So what you might put in is my baby or my child or um, pregnant or starting my own business after childbirth or think about what they might be saying because people do actually write this stuff. This time, we will look at posts and what you will get is all of the posts where people have mentioned, look, here goes Zena. And then you can start to talk to them. I'm not saying do not rush in and go, oh, that's something I can help you with and sell at them. Remember that if you're in a networking room and somebody walks over to you and says, hi, I'm Joe Blocks and I do photocopiers here, buy from me. You really want them to go away very fast. So don't do it on LinkedIn. This is why we shouldn't be um, connecting up with people and sending a, a bit of sales spam. Nobody likes that, do we? No, we get fed up with it. So it's all about building relationships. It's also, you know, doing that at a networking event is like spotting somebody in the room, going up to them and saying, hey, you're gorgeous, marry me. And you'd be like, you might want to take on a few dates first. Okay, same thing. So once you have found your target market, we're now going to go to the home feed. You curate your own home feed because LinkedIn will show you posts from people who you have, whose posts you have previously commented on or they've commented on yours because you're telling LinkedIn, this is someone I want to network with. Keep showing our posts to each other, okay? So if you didn't like what's in your home feed, it's your fault. So those people who come on have been complaining that they don't like your post, they're only telling LinkedIn to show them more of your posts. Oh, whatever. Okay, so by that token, LinkedIn is going to show your posts. Well, overnight, about 98% of people LinkedIn will show your posts to are your first degree connections with whom you have built an algorithmic bond. That means you've commented on their post or they've commented on yours. So, it pays to be commenting on the posts of your target market so that when you post, they're more likely to see what you post. Okay. When your post starts to go viral, for want of a better word, when it gets a heck of a lot of attention, that is people putting comments in it, then LinkedIn will start to show your post to your second and third degree connections. Nobody comments on posts from company pages. The only company page posts you tend to see in your feed are ones have been paid for. And it's like trying to go into a networking event with a big roll up banner in front of you and build relationships from behind it. Okay. Plus, you have to ask people to follow your company page. And it was so bad at one stage, people asking other people to do that, that lots of people went in and switched it off. Do not allow anyone to invite me to follow the company page. This is, this is a dead loss. It really is. You can't, you can't build relationships from behind a faceless company. So work through your own profile. 
Okay, so um, if you don't like the, what somebody's putting in your feed, don't go and give them a comment, but instead click these and um, just unfollow that person. Um, they won't know you've unfollowed them, but you stay connected and you get to have access to all of their network. Notice here, this one is a company page post. But look, promoted, it's been paid for, and I'm not interested. Okay, so in the first hour after you have posted something, you have to get, so what happens as you're typing your post, LinkedIn is putting a spam filter over it, and it's looking for things it doesn't like. And one of the things it doesn't like is salesy speak. Because if this was a place full of adverts, no one would stay. What LinkedIn wants is for you to create interesting conversations because then people are interested in being here and they will stay. So if they think it's salesy, they mark it as spam and they downgrade it. They don't show it to many people at all. If it's okay or clear to go they start to show it to a few people and if in the first hour after you post you get at least five good substantial conversational comments then linkedin thinks oh this looks like it's going to spark a great conversation so they actually start to show it to more people and then the more people who comment the more people so you get more and more impressions an impression means that it's appeared on somebody's screen like this. It doesn't mean they've opened it and read it, but it's a numbers game. Because a percentage of the impressions will read your post. A percentage of them will view your profile because they're interested in you and what you've got to say. A percentage will send you a um, connection request, will build algorithmic bonds with you, and will eventually become your clients and 90% of nothing is nothing so you really really have to get those conversations going you should be looking for I would say at least a thousand to one and a half thousand impressions on each post that you make and upwards. Um, mine generally go from one and a half thousand up to 46,000 impressions. And one guy I taught threw everything I taught him into one post and got 660,000 impressions. And he still tells everybody about it, like a couple of years later, because he was so chuffed with that. The reason we talk about all sorts of things on LinkedIn is because. People buy into you as a person. If you start talking about your pet dog, that's okay because people like dogs. And they come and comment on that and create algorithmic bonds with you. And then when you do an educational post or a sales post, then LinkedIn is also going to show that to them as well. Now, when somebody actually clicks, you see the see more? I've just sent LinkedIn algorithmic points for this post. The more, the longer I spend with this open post on my um, screen now, reading it, will give it um, dwell time algorithmic points. When I click like or leave one of these emojis, it gives them more points, but the most points I give it and the biggest boost I give it is if I leave a comment of five words or more. Now, um, that's why everyone, everyone on LinkedIn is useful to you. If you don't know them, that's fine. You don't know who they know and you don't know who they're going to be. They may comment on your post thereby pushing it out further into the feed and in front of your target market. They also give you access to the network for your search filters. So 
Don't be salesy. Be conversational. Talk with your audience, not at them. Don't put too many hashtags. More than three to five hashtags on LinkedIn goes against you. And I know this sounds counterintuitive, but post with a photograph on never get as many impressions as one that is literally only text or a PDF document. There are 13 different styles of post. You should vary them because uh, if you don't and you do the same sort of thing all the time, you will get audience fatigue. So I'm going to stop sharing right now. I don't know how long I've been waffling on at you for, but I hope you've all taken lots of notes. And if you have any questions, just everybody just, I don't know how Zena wants to handle them, but get everybody to unmute or put the hand up or whatever. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. We ha have had a couple of questions in the um, box, actually. So let's go through them first, and then we'll open it up to everyone who, who wants to ask otherwise. Um, so Shabari, am I saying that right? Sh is it Shabari? Shabari? It, 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 it's Shabari, yes. Shabari, sorry. <laughs> That's all um, right. So Shabari um, asked, how do you show your reviews and where where are they on LinkedIn? Sorry, say that again because I was just reading for something. Yes, okay. <laughs> how, how do you show your reviews and where are they on your LinkedIn page? The, are you talking about the five-star review, reviews page, Shabari? Okay, right. So... Um, when you set up your profile, it asks you what it is that you talk about. So basically, you will put hashtag whatever your, you know, your specialities are. And then you get a grey box. And it's, it's, can I just share my screen again and show you? You can you see the grey box here, providing services? Yes, yeah. Okay, sorry. It's not there's talks about. I'm sorry, I, I should have said providing services. Now, once the, the, the LinkedIn will give you that box and then you need to click on here, see all details. And your, your reviews, but it's there. Okay, you then have to populate it. So you can put videos on there. All I have put on there is my logo and an explanation about how it sums me up. Um, because I find I didn't want to swamp the five-star reviews that came after. Oh, are you, um, sorry, Pam, are you talking about your page rather than your own profile? Is it is, uh, your personal profile? Uh, are, you, are you talking about your business page? No, this is on no. your personal profile. Right, because I can't see um, where it says providing services. I've added talks about and then, you know, variety of hashtag things. Mm -hmm. um, and then it says, uh, you know, open to ad section and then al analytics, resources, creator mode, um, which is on and then featured, and then activity. Um, but I can't see where it says providing services. I think what you'll have to do is go into your settings um, and put it in there. But it's something, if you give me a shout, um, we can jump on a Zoom and you can share your screen and we can have a look for it. Okay, thank you. And see if why you haven't got it, no problem. What else have we got? Thanks for that, Pam. Um, the next question was from Ruth. It says, how do we check if they're active on LinkedIn again? So how do we check if people are active? Okay, right. So as you go to somebody's profile and you scroll down a bit, you'll see the activity box. And if they haven't posted or commented on somebody else's post, and remember, commenting is as important as posting as it's networking um 
If they haven't done that for 90 days, LinkedIn considers it an inactive account and it will say, so if it was, say, Ruth's profile, it would say, post that Ruth, uh, any activity Ruth has had in the last 90 days would show here, or it looks like she hasn't posted lately or something like that. So that's quite inactive. Any posts they have done or any um, comments, you will see there. Brilliant. Um, the next one um, is from Samina. It's not necessarily a question, but maybe for your advice. As Samina said, I'm hesitant to post as I feel embarrassed if not many likes or comments. This is what, this is honestly what I do. People come to me feeling this way and what I do is I give them the confidence. Um there's a knack, there's there's a secret source. I always say this. Um if you ah uh, right, okay, I'm intolerant to onions. So I can't go to any curry house and say, can I have a curry without onions? Because it's in the base sauce. All right. So the base sauce gives everything on the menu its flavor. So there's a base sauce with ingredients in it that will give all of your different posts a flavor that will make them like and comment. But I'll give you a hint, okay? Ask them a question. Again, don't say I all the time. Try and use the word you. Get people involved. Be interesting. Tell stories. And at the end, um, ask a question. Because if you don't, it doesn't give people anywhere to go. And counterintuitively, maybe, ask an, a, a, a closed-ended question. Because if you were to say, can you remember a time when? And if anybody has to go, um, you've lost them. But if you say, do you like this? Yes or no, black or white, left or right, they find it easy to answer and they put their hands on the keyboard. And once the fingers are on the keyboard, they don't leave it there because they're human. And I'll tell you why. It works. Trust me. Okay. Because, you know, sometimes I do have posts, but I never put them on. I'm hesitant because I'm thinking, I don't even have... Because I just think, oh my God, this is going to be so embarrassing if no one likes it, no one posts. And then it kind of like, I lose my confidence, even though I think I've got something important to say. I mean, I know I'm not very link active on LinkedIn, but recently, um, you know, one of my posts that I do alongside my other job has changed. So I've got a new post. And for that, I thought, right, okay, I've got to be more active now. Um, so I kind of like struggle with LinkedIn anyway, social media. But then the other thing is, when I do want to comment or put something on, I'm just thinking, oh, you know, I'm just a tiny little person in this maze of, uh, you know, other people who are kind of like having so many likes and so many posts and I'm probably just not as, well, you know, like a sh shrinking violet. So I kind of like not put anything on really. So I'll put something on and then I'll just delete it. I think what's the point? It's just going to be embarrassing and I'm prob it's probably not important what I'm saying. Okay. Because you find that people that have got lots of likes and a huge, huge following, they can put something in basic. And I, know, and I get it that they've built up their uh, profile, their connections and everything. And here's me quite new. And I think, and I'm just like, for me, I'm struggling because I'm thinking, well, how do I actually start that? And how do I actually build it up? But what you've said today is very useful. So that's my concern or um, apprehension. Right, okay. Let me ask, is it is it Shamina or Samina? Samina, right, okay, right. So right now, tell me the last post that you saw from someone else that had absolutely nothing on it without looking. Um I've not really looked today, to be honest. Okay. Can you remember any? Um, well, I think there was one possibly by Rikia uh, she's someone that I present and mm -hmm. I think she posted something um but she I think she shared it but nobody liked it she shared okay. something so you you said you represent her do you represent you, her yeah what, what no no I follow her she follows me she is a connection right okay so that's the only one out of hundreds 
You see, people don't remember them. They really, really don't. And it's it's not even about the quality. It's not, it's not about what you've got to say. It's mm. about the way you write it. And if you if you tell stories and involve the audience, it will work. Okay, oh, because it's, it's very di- basically I have. I always say when I come on these things, I'm here to help, I'm here to serve, and I think mm. that's important. And I'm not here to be blinking doing this horrible upselling that people do in these seminars, you know. But I, I have developed, I've just done it now, and it's a two-hour workshop that literally takes you from not knowing what in the hell, how to start to how to write a post that people will stop on, open it, read it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and comment on it. So if you want to ask me for details of that, you'd be most welcome to come along to the next one. Okay, um, thank you. You know, but also um, it's against LinkedIn rules. But just when you're starting off, it might be a good idea just to say to a few, about five friends, can you just comment on this? Just, just to get the algorithm bumped a little bit okay okay mind okay i'll definitely take that on board by the way everybody can connect with me because my network is your network and you're welcome to access it so please send me a connection request Brilliant. Thank you, Pam. Um, Samina, I hope that answers part of your question. If I may contribute to that a little bit more, um, purely because I worked through the same fears when I first started off, but I think everybody does. And Serena, I would encourage you, because I did this, I would encourage you to go to a profile that you really like, that's really engaged, that has lots mm. of likes, lots of following and lots of comments. When you have the time, scroll back to some of their much older posts, I'm talking like years ago. Yeah. And I can guarantee you that they will have only had a handful of likes or a handful okay. of comments or no comments. They will, everybody will start with that level playing field. What I had to remember when I went through those emotions is my, my favorite phrase is um, marry the process, divorce the outcome. Okay. Because the reason you need to do that for yourself in business um, or on social media to promote yourself is because if you have something to give, whether it be a service or a product or something of value, and you just share that, what are the chances of people actually reaching out or even seeing that if you've not posted about anything else? It's too random, like Pam said. They'll mm. probably see it, scroll past it, forget about it, and never see it again. So okay. when you started throwing stuff out and you may not get the likes and you may not get the comments but I think as a as an average statistic across the board of any business it takes somebody 12 times to see something to actually Mm. notice it Mm. so it may take 12 of your posts for people to notice that you're even posting regularly Right. Or posting about a particular thing. And just knowing those facts really helped me to get started. Getting started, I believe, is the hardest thing. Yes. And when yes. when somebody does, if they're not your first degree connection, if it has, you know, been shown to um somebody outside of your first degrees, um, thank them and turn them into a connection because they're active scrollers on LinkedIn who like to comment and you want them in your network because you want All them right. to see your stuff again. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Mm. Yes, it does. Yeah, yes, I have def- definitely need to learn the rules and that's why I'm on this today mm. because um, I just thought, well, I need to become more active. But then I've been hiding because the odd post that I have put on, it's probably had a few impressions or quite a lot of impressions but no comments and no likes, maybe a couple. Um, and then I just thought, okay, I, I think, I think <laughs> I'm think i not suited for this. So, um, yeah, or maybe I've just written something rubbish. No, 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 no. It's just the way it needs to be formulated, honestly. Yeah. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, Actually, thank you so much for the question as well, Samina. Sorry to interrupt you. I didn't realise you were good. 
um, face something else. Um, I was just going to say thank you so much for the question because it, um, it is normal and a lot of people feel that way. So you're not alone. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate that. Does because it, I definitely need to promote, promote myself because mm-hmm. I do presenting and it's the new role that I'm in and I'm just wanting to get out there and be, to be recognised and to open a door for myself um, and obviously the, the prospective client as well. If anybody does want to know about this two-hour workshop, it's incredibly affordable and I've had some fantastic feedback from it. So I'm not going to go chasing people up and sending out flipping horrible sales messages. Just connect with me on LinkedIn and just say, send me, and then that's fine. Okay, I'm going to do that. No problem. Thank Thanks, you. Pam. I am just going to say, because we have now gone over the one hour, I appreciate this is uh, a lot of time to spend with us tonight if you are in a rush and you need to go off. We are recording this session. It will be uploaded to the website. And if you have any questions that have gone unanswered, even after you watch over the recording or anything, like Pam said, connect with her, ask her the questions. That's what she's here for. Connect with her. She'll be more than happy to answer anything. Isn't that right, Pam? Yeah, yeah, you can always fire oh, yeah. questions at me. Have we got any more questions? I'm, I'm happy to sit and I, I'm here to help. Yeah. Yeah, we've got we've got a few more. Um, yeah, just, just on that note, what Samina was relating to, I actually resisted um, uh, posting something about the latest season of Love is Blind this week because I feared that it would distract my audience from who I am professionally. But like you've said and expressed so many times, it's so important to come across human and relatable and I feel like this week I will go online and have that rant (laughs) because um it needs to be hard you know that's just a part of who I am um and what I do people you know forming these algorithmic bonds with you um for other reasons and anyway listen to this okay magic movie you go to the movies all right and you're in there for I don't know an hour and a half a couple of hours and if all of that all of, w- w- was adverts and 15 minutes of movie, you would not be going to the cinema again. You wouldn't even wait for the film, would you? No, right. Um, so um, don't keep putting sales posts out all the time. Um, be the movie and then you're right for your 15 minutes of adverts. Does that help? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Pam. Um, Ruth had put um, that she'd missed a bit about audience fatigue. If you could just reiterate that, that, yeah, that would be great. She's had to leave as well, hasn't she? But Ruth, if you're watching this on the on catch up, good grief. Yeah. On the website. Um, oh, no, Ruth is there. Ruth is oh, there. Oh, she's there. Can't yeah. see her. Right. Okay. Oh, she's up there. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was the question again? About, about audience fatigue audience fatigue right so if you are doing text only posts all the time or video posts all the time or um picture posts which don't do very well anyway please don't waste your time looking for a stock photograph to, to go with 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 a post and if you're doing them the same tight style of post all the time people just think oh and they switch off if you mix it up because there's 13 different styles um, your audience are more likely to be drawn to what you've written. Brilliant. I think That's that awesome. also answers the next question, Pam. The next question was from Shabari saying that, um, did you say that don't use images as that slows down the algorithm? But like you said, is it a matter of using a mixture of things to keep the audience active? If you're going to use images, you're far better embedding them in a PDF document and not just a one-page document. Um, And again, this is a style of post that I teach people to do. It's not as easy as it sounds. But if if you look through my post, you'll find some some in the featured section where you actually tell a story, like a child's storybook. So you've got an image and then underneath you've just got a few words. Anybody got kids and they've read like the Gruffalo and all of this, yeah, and and it leaves a bit of a cliffhanger at the end, yeah, and 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 you have to turn the page to find out what happens next. Do that. Tell a story through the pictures because then you get lots of dwell time because people are scrolling through. Brilliant! Thank you very much, Pam. Um, what about posting videos? So, like short ones, quick clips. When on holiday, that kind of thing. Video impressions are counted differently. 
to uh, other types of posts. So you might think you haven't got as many impressions, but they're only counted um, by the number of people who have clicked on your video and watched it for uh, at least three seconds. OK, you've only got something like after three minutes, people will switch off anyway. Um, make sure that they are captioned. There's lots of auto caption um, apps on the Internet that you can use for free um, because you always have to draw people in with the very first line of any post. And if it's a video, you have to draw them in with that line. Some people uh, are in a, in a big office, open plan. They, they haven't got headphones um, or maybe they're commuting without the headphones. They can't listen. So uh, make sure you caption and, and make sure people have got a damn good reason for watching the video, what's in it for them. Brilliant. Um, a question from Linda, where do you add your lead magnet? I know you mentioned it, but I didn't see it on the screen at that moment. Right, so a lead magnet, for those who don't know, is something that you have on your website, which is a free download. And it's usually something like you call it a book, a free book or a booklet. It's actually something that you send by email. And it's maybe it's a how to. Or maybe it's a free gift or something. Yeah. Because when people then come to your website to get a free, the top 10 things you need to know to. Or. Um, a free gift or whatever it is, then in exchange for that, what you what do they have to give you? Email address. Maybe even the phone number, I don't know, um, and their name. So you've then got this list of people who um, have put their head above the parapet and said, oh, I'm your target market, I'm interested. And then you get this mailing list. So um, uh, your, your featured section could actually be an offer towards your lead magnet to your website just right up there at the top Brilliant. if anybody doesn't understand Thanks. what i'm talking about just say pam just can you just explain that because <coughs> not doing a good job it's okay Brilliant. um rita's asked would it help if our group jumps on and likes and comments for others that's what other communities do they do but yes but no but yes but no but yes but no right okay number one is against linkedin rules and as a LinkedIn trainer, I can't advocate doing that. I would say if you've got maybe a few friends when you very first start posting to help you to start getting out there a little bit and building up. But really, the problem, they're called engagement pods. And the problem with them is this. They're full of people who write rubbish. So you click on them in this WhatsApp pod and... You look at it and you think, what in the hell am I supposed to comment on this? Because it's, it's not very good the way it's written. And you, then there are rules. So you have to support absolutely everybody else within a certain time frame. Then. People start to complain when you don't. And it all gets a bit hairy at times. But the thing is, remember what I said about algorithmic bonds. Are you not better spending the same amount of time commenting on the post of your target market, creating the algorithmic bonds with them? Because if you're writing stuff that isn't good enough for everybody to want to open and read and comment on, the only people opening it, reading it and commenting on it are the people in your engagement part, yeah? And they're the only people that you're being shown to and them to you and building bonds. And so what's happening Round and round and round in circles. Thank you, Pam. That's very valuable to me because I probably would have asked the same question. Um, Linda has said, well worth the investment. I assume you're referring to Pam's um, uh, course that she mentioned. Um, I've just done this two hour session. So thank you for that, Linda. Uh, but the best is very useful session. Thank you very much. Um, Derek is your confidence man, he says. So any confidence the issues, please feel free to connect with Derek. Um, Rushba has asked, how do you check the likes? Um, I, 
it's just on, normally on the bottom of the post, isn't it, Pam? It's the yes. same for LinkedIn as it is for the mm-hmm. social media, yeah. Okay. Just underneath your post, it will tell you how many likes that you've got. You will obviously see the number of comments. It will also show you, you know, um, who has liked. So that's a good good way of, um, you know, for thanking people and connecting up with them. Um, also, you will see a button that says View Analytics. It's not brilliant, but it will show you the uh, number of people by geographical location and the um, job titles and some of the companies that you've that have viewed. <coughs> Won't tell you who in those companies, but it will tell you. So you kind of get an idea of whether you're hitting the right target market. Brilliant, thank you. Um, another note from Linda, which I think is very powerful. Um, Linda's first post after spending two hours on Pam's session, she had 1,892 impressions in three days after spending two hours. She didn't tell so, me that. This is the first time <laughs> I've heard. Well done, Linda. <laughs> there you go. And you wish Linda actually wasn't posting on LinkedIn prior to that. Am I right, Linda? No, she wasn't. So, and in wow. fact, I've been on there for years as my corporate profile. So I've only just done the banner and then done the um, two-hour session with uh, Pam. And, uh, yeah, it made such a difference. And I wanted to make an impact with my first post. Brilliant. Well Thank done, Lisa. So and then. congratulations. <laughs> Brilliant. Um that's fantastic. Okay, but Deba has asked, can you please explain algorithms in LinkedIn and how they work? Oh, I think that's like a million dollar question, isn't it? Pam? It, it <laughs> is. I mean, I think I've kind of touched on that all the way through. You know, it's it's the computer generated algorithms that say basically how many people are commenting on this post and liking it. It's popular, therefore we'll show it to more people. Also, um, who is it that has commented before because they clearly want to network with each other? We'll show those to the, the, those people. Um, but the, here's something. If your post starts to get a hell of a lot of engagement and traction, a human team takes over at LinkedIn head office. This is true, right? Then they start to read it and then they go, Ooh. And they, if you've mentioned, say like you're, I don't know, you, you, you're targeting accountants and somehow quite cleverly, almost subliminally, you've put the word accountants through your post. It then will start to put your post in front of those accountants. <laughs> those humans do that. That's really great to know. Very powerful mm. indeed. Mm. Um, Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for that, Pam. Samina has asked, is frequency of posts or quality of posts important? Quality is incredibly important. You Frequency, okay. You can post every single day, which is great. If you do, keep showing up, keep showing up. But um, you can you can eat uh, fast food every single day, but who likes a crap takeaway? So is it worth? So I, I'd try and post if you can't do every day, maybe th- three times a week. Consistency is key. Um, just remember that you also have to spend time replying to everybody who comments on your post or at least liking their comments. And you also have to spend time using the filters to find your target market and to be creating algorithmic bonds with them. So people who do nothing but just post and post two or three times a day, it's a waste of time. Brilliant. Thank you, Pam. One last thing that's just come up from Ruth, the amount of hashtags, that's really valuable. Thank you. If you could just remind us how many hashtags of it that you said on average to use, not more um, than. Current thinking is three is best. And for God's sake, please, I'll tell you one more thing about hashtags, Ruth. Are you ready? Okay. So um, you can talk about anything you want on LinkedIn, anything. All right. Now, let's say you said uh, you started a post about, so this morning I decided to put a chopped banana on my cereal. That's okay, yeah? 
right? But do not go and put hashtag banana and hashtag cereal because that's what's in your post. I, you will start noticing people do this. You look for it. It's so funny, right? But if you, how many people are going to be following hashtag banana? Really? Okay, so you need to pick the three hashtags that you think your target market are going to be interested in and wanting to follow. No matter what your post is about, who do you want to get in front of? So check the number of followers that your hashtag has got by putting it into the search bar and LinkedIn will tell you. The biggest um, one <clears throat> with about 60 million followers something like that is is hashtag wow. india wow quite big mm. a couple more questions have popped up pam um right. if someone shares if someone shares your post does linkedin show the original post to more people ask shibari right okay when you share a post whether it's your own whether it's someone else's, it bombs. Never get likes or comments. Very, very rarely you get anything on a shared post. People make the mistake of going, I'll write a post from my company page and then I'll share it from my personal profile down the plug hole. Doesn't work. Okay. What it does, so, okay, Zena, if I was, say, um, sharing your post, I would be giving you a little bit of kudos up at LinkedIn because I'd be going, oh, this post worthy, but I would give it algorithmic points. However, so it does help you in that respect. Um, they've now introduced something called repost, which, because sharing, you see a little bit of the post and then you have to open it. And it's good to, you then have to write something about why you've shared it. And even then, but repost just puts the entire post in, into the feed of your, your followers. But again, reposts don't get a lot. So they're nice for the person you're sharing and reposting for, but they're not doing a lot for you. Um, I then think... Sorry, go on. Sorry, Pam. I was going to say that, so if you're resharing their post, you mm -hmm. know, the person that's following you, then would it not be courtesy, courteous for them to, at some point, share your post? Does it not work like that? <laughs> no. They just don't. Be nice, wouldn't it? But they don't. Um, and <laughs> if somebody shares my post, I always go to the post that they've shared and I will thank them say thank you so much I'll, I'll write on it for right. the and share but that'll probably be the only person who comments but whether you share a post for someone or not um don't do it without leaving them a nice comment on the original post because that's doing them the most favors really okay okay makes sense thank you okay I've got a question. Um, I've had my hand up for a while. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, Carol. sorry, Carol. I was leaving it to Zena. I'm blaming Zena. <laughs> sorry, Carol. You should have just bumped me in the chat and say, hey. No, that's speak. fine. That's fine. Um, Pam, you know what I do with regards to featuring the speakers. Now, you say yeah. don't use images, but I've got no alternative but to use images and the flyer promoting the speakers for each event. You know, I did yours. What yeah, would you say? Okay. I would suggest putting each speaker onto a different page of a document, saving it as a PDF and making it into a carousel. And on the first page, put like click this way to find out which one of these could help you or you would be most interested in and maybe ask the question, you know, um, which of these subjects? Or do you know any of these people? Do they, I, I, I'd have to speak to you about it separately because, okay. again, it's quite nuanced. But if you're going to use photographs yeah. and, and say to people, this is what you've got to gain by coming and ask them a question. 
Yeah. The problem is because they're sharing a story and we don't know what that story is and the audience won't know what that story is until they come on. So very rarely do the speakers actually promote their business. Yeah, but you you know, you've got an idea that of something they're going to talk about. So you can say this is going to be inspirational yeah. because, yeah, not. So, for instance, when I shared my story, um, you could say, you know, um, basically, uh, this is a story of um, resilience and finding a purpose in life and blah, blah, blah. And, Pam's mm-hmm. going to, I think you did, you know, something like yeah, the, yeah. the story of what happened in India is ready to be shared or something like that and, and leave that intrigue. Okay. It's a separate mm-hmm. conversation, really, because it's it's quite a, a, a deep subject, but it's. Yeah, yeah. And I've got to do a post for next Thursday. <laughs> and also you have to write posts not about this subject so that people will create algorithmic bonds with you so that when you do put out the post about this subject, they will see it. Mm. Yeah. I'm loving all these questions. Are there any more? Thank you, Pam. Samina's got her hand up. But before Samina asks a question, there was one that just came through as a direct message to me. So the question is, are there any tools or tactics for managing the LinkedIn inbox? Yeah, um, literally you can archive the things that you don't want to see. You can sort them. by So you can click mark this as unread, then you can sort by unread so that you're just um, looking at the unread ones. You can report some things as spam if you don't want that kind of thing. There is a spam filter on it and you can, um, what else? Um, you can just delete things. Um, so, yeah. It, it's just, but to me, it's better than email because if, I don't know, Ruth had sent me or something and I'd replied and then she replied back, the entire thread's in one thing instead of like an email here and an email there. And a, you, know, you know what I mean? It's, it's like, whew, and, and we remember it straight away the thread and we just scroll back and see what we've been talking about before. Brilliant. Thank you, Pam. Um, Samina, go ahead. Sorry. Hello, hi. You know, sometimes when I'm on LinkedIn, mm-hmm. um, I, I sometimes see people making requests, like when they're looking for a position, they'll put their CV on and say, I'm looking for a position or I'm wanting to hook up with this kind of person or this kind of group. Is that okay to do? Or would you do that once you have a bit of a following? Because, or would, would it sound that you're desperate? No, I think it's fine because for that reason, there's recruiters have a special package called Recruiter. Inventive, that isn't it? Anyway, so they've got this thing called Recruiter, Recruiter Light or something. So what happens is behind the scenes, if you're looking to, to use LinkedIn to get employment uh, or, or uh, a career move, um, in your settings, you literally switch on, let recruiters know I'm open. That's okay. Recruiters can see that and no one else can. So wow. what they do is they hide it from um, your current employer. Now, what you can choose to do if you don't want to hide that is to put a little frame on your photograph that says open to work. People use that. Oh, so many people put that. Say they're a freelancer. Yes. So open to work. And when they talk to me, I say, Are you looking for a job? And they say, No. And I say, Look, now that looks desperate. Take it off. <laughs> yeah. But being yeah. open to work just means, yeah, you know. Um, but again, you should always treat link- LinkedIn, um, your your potential employers as your ideal target market. And go and create, find them, create algorithmic bonds with them. And Make sure you go to the jobs tab and register the type of jobs you're interested in and get a yes, list and, and yeah. apply for jobs for it. Okay. And does it make sense to actually um, have, is it the premium LinkedIn or something? Oh. Because I always get people messaging me and I'm thinking, oh, maybe I'm losing out because sometimes I've had viewings from people who have not disclosed their identity, you know, the private. And I'm just thinking, oh, what does that mean then? Does that mean? maybe someone's checking me out as a potential employee people people right okay a few things i want to address here one 
some people, if you go into your settings, you can choose whether you want to view, move around LinkedIn in private mm-hmm. mode. And some people just have that switched on permanently. Right. Um, so it's not you, in, don't take it personally. They're not just trying to hide from you. They just like to be anonymous. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Secondly, people land on your profile for all sorts of mad reasons. They can land on your profile by accident. They can land on your profile by clicking the wrong name. Um, it, it, it you know, and they go, oh, and then that's it. You've seen that they've viewed your profile and and they may have been on there and off there for a second. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So um, (laughs) um, the other thing is that there is no um, paid for LinkedIn package that will show you who those people are who have viewed your profile in private mode. Okay. Okay. So, So don't. Premium, there are two. So one of them, all it does is it gives you a little bit more search results. So at the end of the month, it might say you've reached your limit of searches. Wait for the month to change and you'll get another allocation. But premium gives you more searches and you can see everyone who's viewed your profile, which is, for me, not worth it. Yes. Um, yeah, I don't care. I really don't care. Um, if you know... Um, the size of company that you're targeting, then mm. LinkedIn Sales Navigator has an extra filter which will show you how many employees a company's got. Um, and it will also, you know how I said you need to check out people's profiles and see if they're active or not? Yes. You can ask um, Sales Navigator to only show you active accounts filter them out in the first place so they're two but it's about 70 or 80 pounds a month oof Mm, oof I know well in light of inflation and the current market forget Mm. that then Mm. and you can save people as a lead if you find someone you can save as a lead they are not a lead a lead is somebody who's shown genuine interest in buying from you that's not Right? So they are literally, you're saving them as a target, not a lead. It's just a stupid word. It shouldn't, yeah. Anyway. Right. And, and then you can go back and, and have a look when they've posted so that you, but do you know what? If you turn them into a first degree connection, then you'll see a little bell on their profile. And if you click on that bell, you'll get yes. a notification every time they've posted. So okay. save you 70 or 80 quid unless you really, really need it. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for those tips. I appreciate it, Pam. No thank problem. You. Pam, there is one last question, and I'm going to make this the last question because okay. I am very conscious of time, and I appreciate you've given us so much value right. tonight. Um, if anybody else has any questions that come up after this point, please do reach out directly and please do give me some feedback because lots of people have been really quiet and i'd love to know if it's been useful i loved it it was brilliant (laughs) i want some more (gasps) it's been really insightful we're we're half an hour over we're still going so i think that feedback in itself pam that this has been so valuable there's lots of questions it's so on topic right now and we're here for a reason so thank you so much pam Pam, it's been really useful yeah sorry thank you sorry i'm talking over you i was just going to say that it's been really useful i mean normally at this time of night you know particularly when i'm working and then cooking and feeding the hungry you know i normally just retire at this time and kind of just go into a smoke and daydream and go into my own little world (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but um you know so it's been really insightful it's been worth it i think um one of the things when people do work with me so i do various things so i have this eight week package um where people just come bespoke it's just me and that other person and we meet once a week and we work through everything and we get them confident and and what people always say to me is i think an hour and a half has gone so quickly and um I enjoy it so much and then at the end they'll say I don't want this to be the last week and I think that's lovely yeah I'm I'm just a people person I just like people um Shabari asks 
I haven't yet created a business page on LinkedIn. I'm planning to do that soon. You mentioned that you shouldn't send requests to people to like your business or content. So how do I get people to like my page? Don't bother. It's not worth it because you're not really going to post through it. It's literally just a packet with keywords for SEO and um, and then pull your pro your um, logo through to your personal profile and then work through your personal profile. You, you can literally just go inviting people and clicking and you can ask so many per week. But really, if you're not going to then post through it, why would you do that? I hope that makes sense. <coughs> Brilliant. Uh, Thank you so much, Pam. Um, somebody has said, uh, Shaz, Shaz said that she wants to join your course, so I've directed her to link with you directly, um, yeah. connect with you directly, so I'm sure you'll be able to direct her. So thank you so much for today, Pam. It's been so, 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 so super valuable. If anybody hasn't yet connected with Pam whilst we've been on this workshop, please go and do so on LinkedIn um, or any other platform that Pam sees. But I'm not. <laughs> you're going to get access to my network and I'm not going to go sales spamming you. So it's yeah. horrible. You know, forbidden <laughs> practice. Right. If you want to ask me about working with me, you know, um, even the two hour course, which is literally only £149, is so affordable, then ask me the balls in your court. And Linda's already shared with her amazing results just from working with Pam in two hours. So just imagine what can be possible for you guys. So thank you so much again, Pam. Thanks to all of you for tuning in and staying with us for this long. Like we really appreciate your time and I hope that this has been so, so valuable to you. Um, if you haven't yet connected with Pam, you know how to. If you haven't yet connected with myself, you know how to. I did share my Instagram link in the chat earlier i'll try and do that again um and i'm more of an instagram person my linkedin will be vamped up now <laughs> now that i've made all my notes look at this like an essay i told right? you you'd have loads of notes a carbuncle and a blister i know yeah um so i'll be sort of polishing up my profile for sure um it would be great if anybody by the way and i'll put this out there if anybody wants to be held accountable on linkedin following this workshop i'm open to that because i could so do with a buddy um and then we can kind of be in pam's ear together if you like <laughs> but yeah um thanks so much for joining us and like I mentioned earlier, for those of you who joined us a little bit later, I am always looking for expert speakers. You've seen today how valuable the workshop was. So if you, if your expertise is in a particular area and you would love to share that on this platform, please message me directly. And, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much everything for tonight. I don't want to keep you any, any longer. Um, and yeah. I don't normally wrap up. Can you see I'm winging it? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs>